Welcome to my discussion in 1120 on long-term liability. It's still snowing. There's ice on the ground. And there's three inches of snow on top of it. Yahoo! I'm not going out. Just wanted to let you know what's happening here. Let's get to our goal for this pink cast. We're going to learn to do accounting for loans where the payment is held constant and the principal and interest are allowed to vary. And these, as you'll recall, are the most popular loans because people like to hold payment constant. It's easier to budget around, to budget around. Well, let's do our facts. I'm going to use the same example where I do a three-year loan, 10% interest, because we can all see it and calculating it easily. I'm going to borrow $45,000, and it's our payment that's going to be equal, with principal and interest varying, and a timeline. So we're going to borrow 45000 at the end of each year, make a payment, and after three years, it's going to be a zero balance. I'm going to put you on hold, and... Well, we're going to make an amortization schedule because it's always best to analyze your situation before you start drawing journal entries out. And when you do an amortization schedule, you know what your entries will be for the whole loan. You won't do it as you go and make a mistake somewhere along the way. So hold on, and I'll draw up the schedule. So, we have the headings on. We have our date, our beginning balance, our principal payment, our interest expense portion. The sum of those together will equal the total payment and our ending balance, which will become our beginning balance next time. Let's start with our facts. On 12-31-13, you borrow $45,000 on the last day of the year, so it's our ending balance. There was no beginning balance. That puts us right here on our timeline. On 12-31-14, a year has passed and interest is incurred on every day of that year. So we need to figure out how our payment will be split between principal and interest. Now, I need to give you the total payment. And the total payment, I'm not going to explain how I got I'm just going to give it to you. It's 18000 $95. So I'll put that there. 18095 So without much ado, we'll just say our principal payment, or our total payment is going to be 18095 And we're going to hold that constant for all three years. Just going to write that down there to show you it's not going to change. It's principal and interest that are going to vary. So, let's figure out what interest is. The, beginning, the ending balance for the whole year was 45000 10% of that is going to be 4500 So then, I need to calculate my principal payment. I know the total payment, 18095 I know the principal portion. So you need to subtract the interest from the total payment to tell me what the principal portion is going to be. 18095 minus $4,500 is $13,595. $13,595. And again, that was $18,000, which I gave you, minus interest of $4,500, which was 10% of the ending balance, or beginning balance. The difference is equal to my principal payment. Now, let's talk about the ending balance. For this year, it will be 45000 minus your principal payment at 13595 Most amortization schedules don't show that being subtracted, but I want you to keep track of what portion of the payment I am applying to principal, and that is the principal portion only. That leaves my loan balance at 31405 after the first payment. And it will remain that way all year until it's time to make my next payment. So on 12-31-15, my balance will be the 31405. 
I will have had that outstanding the whole year times that by 10% and interest will be 3140. I'm doing a little rounding here just because I don't want to have a dollar left over in my loan account but if I did always plug it to interest so where are we 31405 times 10% was 3140 18,095 minus 3140 gives you a principal payment of 14,950,955. Check the math of that. And you'll find it is in fact 14,955. So what's my new loan balance? 31,405 minus my principal portion this year of 49,955. Taking up a little room there, isn't it? Gives me my new principal balance of 16,450. 16,450. So 123116. It is 16,000. 450 interest on that will be 10% 10% of 16450 is equal to 1645 and if you subtract that from 18095 you can come up with your principal portion and your principal portion is 16450 which look it's going to exactly pay off this loan if you end up with a dollar difference always plug interest expense and make the loan go to zero because you just paid 16450 on it so if you look at our first payment principal was 13 595 if you look at our second payment principal was 14 955 and if you look at our third payment principal was 16 450 and between all of those they took the loan to zero let's take a look at what happened in that notes payable account I have a little room right here let's do it we have notes payable it started at 45 after our first payment of 13 595 it went down to 31405 after our next payment of 19 or 14955 that balance went down to 16450 and that's what our last payment took it down by and we amortized it down to zero so you can see what's happening in the general ledger and I just used our amortization schedule to make sure that worked so now that we've done that analyzing it's time to make the journal entries for this whole sorted affair on December 31st 2013 I borrowed some money $45,000 and I set it up in a notes payable and you can see that at the end of the first year I made a payment and I can grab my payment right off the line of the amortization schedule that relates to 1231.14 there'll be some principal taken out of the notes payable some interest expense taken out and I'll write a check the cash is being held constant at 18095 and the principal and interest are varying principal is 13595 and my first line interest is 4500 and my first line and my payment is 18095 that takes me out to the end of 1231.14 let's go out another year 
15 and that's going to take me to the end of my second payment. Be notes payable, interest expense, and cash. We can grab it right off our amortization schedule. Principal, 14955 Interest, 3140 Total payment, always 18095 That takes us out to the end of the second year. Let's go out to the end of the third year and see it finish off. 12, 31, 16. Our final payment will have some going to the notes payable, some going to interest expense, and some going against cash. 16450 is the principal portion. 1645 is the interest portion. And 18095 is the cash portion. If you total our columns, you'll notice we did pay off the loan, total amortization schedule, $45,000 worth of principal. Interest is $92.85, and if you compare that to equal principal payments, interest is a little higher when you have a constant payment because you're not pulling out a principal as fast. And our total payments are the sum of the two, $54,000. 285 and again if you compare it to our other loan amortization where we had constant principal it ended up costing us a little more one more thing I want to do with you is look at how this would look on the balance sheet this time I'm not going to do the first year I'm going to come in and grab it right here at the end of the, uh, the end of the first year, not at the beginning of the loan, which is where we did our last one. And you'll notice we'll have a current liability and we'll have a long-term liability coming out of this. So our notes payable at the end of our first payment is 31405. The principal portion that will be paid next year is this fourteen nine fifty five, so we would say less current of fourteen nine fifty five gives us a long term portion of sixteen four fifty. And under current liabilities, we would show current portion of long-term debt in the amount of fourteen nine fifty-five, the principal amount that's due next year. And if you add up fourteen nine fifty-five and sixteen four fifty, which you wouldn't do on the balance sheet. But I want to do just to prove to you something. 14,955 and 16,450 equals the 31,405 that is shown on our amortization schedule. So we're just showing it on the balance sheet between its current portion and its long-term portion. This wraps up our discussion on notes payable which includes mortgages and automobile loans and any time you're making installment payments on something. I'm going to move next into bonds payable. Woohoo! We'll let you go for now. See you later. And thanks for joining me on this snowy and icy day. By now it could be summer and warm and you'll laugh when you hear this. But right now it's a situation. See you later.